I'd love to welcome you to Master Your Life Beyond the Boardroom podcast, a place for ambitious individuals to capture proud moments on who they've become. It's a discussion that finds insights, the highs and the lows on where they have been at stages in their life. A safe space to share and openly talk about their journey. So if you're on a journey yourself and you're wanting to stretch, go further and farther than you've ever thought was possible, mastering your life is something that will connect you with your identity. I'm excited to be welcoming some very interesting guests to add value to your journey. For more information and to stay in the loop on what Master Your Life is all about and gain more value, head over to www.master-your-life.co.uk. Subscribe to my newsletter and stay in the loop. Let's get to it. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Master Your Life Beyond the Boardroom podcast, or in other words, Beyond the Workplace. I am your host, Luke Beastall, and I do say this literally all of the time. I know it sounds like I'm robotically repeating myself, but I have an amazing guest (laughs) on the show today. Her name is Gemma, and we connected and met each other through hot pod yoga and she runs our private community classes she's come and done a little bit of a talk which was really powerful and breath work at our conference earlier this year and I thought as a business owner as a yoga teacher I think it would be absolutely brilliant and invaluable to bring her on this podcast show and share with you not only her insights but her transition from what was an employed role and now running her own business so without further ado Gemma, welcome to the podcast. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And I also want to say, because we were just chatting before, this is Gemma's first podcast. It is, yeah. Like, and it was my first conference as well, my first um, public speaking role as well. <laughs> oh, well, you know, for me, I'm an opportunist, so I'm so glad and grateful that you was happy to say yes and give it a go. Definitely, definitely. It all pays off, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think just even just sharing this with the listeners, what you've just kind of done here about, you know, leaning into that discomfort of going and stepping in front of 50 people in a room and strangers that you don't know and doing some breath work. And then also now coming onto this podcast and, and sharing your story. This, this could possibly open up vulnerability, things that maybe people don't see on mm-hmm. the front end we know what it's like in in business it's we like the shiny we like to show all the the happy and everything going on but behind the scenes people forget that like you say running a business is really challenging definitely definitely and i think it's it's not the thing you see like you just said like it's kind of behind those closed doors isn't it not everyone shows those kind of struggles or like the shadow side of it in a way isn't it yeah definitely so i think to to kind of really kick this off and and have a good starting point I'd love to ask you, Gemma, what brought you into practicing yoga or at least attending that first yoga class? Um, interesting story. So I was backpacking. So I did my teaching degree, used to be a school teacher, spent the first two years been like, yeah, yeah, this is what I want to do. And that last summer of university, I was like, oh, do I really want to do this straight away? Like I just turned 21 and I was like, eh, not quite sure I want to cut. I think in my head that school teaching was like a career for life. Like once you're in, you stay until until you're done. Um, so first day back at uni in the September, rang my best friend and we've been talking about it over the summer, but rang my best friend and I was like, right, come pick me up. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm done. We're, we're going to book the, book the flights. He's like, are we actually doing this? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so we literally went to um, book, do you remember STA Travel? I don't, they're not around anymore, but they kind of specialise in students. I can. Travel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can remember. Yeah, they had like a few stores around, didn't they, as well? Yeah. And you literally used to be like, this is where I want to go. And they used to kind of plan the whole thing for you. But um, yeah, but we literally went but to flights to go to Australia. So I finished university, had my um, graduation on the Thursday and flew out to Australia on the Saturday. 
Um, and whilst backpacking, I did the East Coast of Australia when we first got to um, Oz and did my first yoga class. I want to say it's Byron Bay, but I'm not 100% sure now. But um, yeah, did my first yoga class. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's, it feels all right. It's quite a nice thing to do. Um, and then I, I did a few classes while I was living there, but nothing kind of regular. And then when my degree, oh, when my degree, when my visa ran out, um, I came home absolutely distraught to be coming home but I was like right I'm gonna go and be an adult now <laughs> and I, I'd got my teaching job and to start in the September and I basically ended up using yoga to support my mental health and um things like that while I was teaching full-time so mental health physical health like I worked with four-year-olds I was on those little tables like hunched over a lot so I was getting really bad back pain and neck ache and headaches and stuff like that so I kind of used the yoga to support me in that side of things to begin with i like that and also just to talk about this because i think there is a lot of pressure once you leave school or university that you have to go down the societal route Mm -hmm. what what triggered you or what got you thinking that you know what at 21 i'm gonna go and backpack i'm gonna go and travel because that is a that is a scary step you know going to especially for yourself going to the other side of the world yeah so I don't know I'd been kind of like talking about going away like over the summer like I was gonna do is it like inter is it called interrading when you go around Europe that you could get like a train pass you can hop around Europe on the trains so I was thinking of that and then my friend was like well I want to go to Australia so I was like oh let's go to Australia then and we were going to do the summer but obviously summer in the UK is winter in Australia so we're like "Mm, it's now the best time to go and we were kind of arm and iron about it for a while um, and we were putting it off, putting it off. And I was like, well, let's look at it to go for like a couple of months when I finish university. And it was literally going to be like two months. That's what we were thinking. Um, and then we literally turned up to SCA Travel and I was like, I am not ready to like go and be a, like a societal norm adult. Like <laughs> I was like, I'm not ready for that. I want to spread my wings as I come like, 21, like not like 51 or 61 already. Like I need to, I need to experience life and not just go into education because I literally and in my head as well I was like I've been to school been to secondary school been to college been to university and then I'm going to go and work in a school like there's so much more out there than school (laughs) Um, and that's kind of what kind of started that itch really and then yeah while we were away did I I was also actually on um, uh, anti-anxiety medication for like three or four years um and I forgot to take them with me. I'm going off on a right tangent here, but <laughs> I, I like it. <laughs> I actually forgot to pack them. Um, it might, now I'm like, thanks, universe, but <laughs> forgot to pack the tablet. So we left Heathrow and I wasn't nervous at all. Like I was just so excited and ready for it. And I thought I'd be terrified, but I was like, no, my body's telling me this is good. Like I'm excited for this. Um went to Hong Kong for a few days and then got to Australia. And within within a few days, we also had nowhere to stay either, by the way. Like we landed in Sydney and we were like, right, where are we sleeping tonight? And just coming away from that like very tight schedule of yeah. you need to be in a lecture at this time and you need to be here at this time and this train and that, you know, like coming away from those timetables was like f- so freeing and liberating. Um, Yeah, literally landed in Sydney and we were like, so we'll just find a hostel for tonight and just figure it out from there. And I actually met a girl in the, in that hostel room from my hometown in the UK, like back in Surrey. And we were like, this is weird. And just kind of made loads of connections. Nice. For a few days. Crazy. Um, and then, yeah, we went up to Cairns and traveled the East coast. And within the first like three days of being there, went into the skydive and like, okay. Landed on the beach and my mum was like, do not tell me until you've like done it. I don't want to know. <laughs> um, so literally went and did it like within two or three days of being there. Um, and obviously I had no medication. So I was like, if I can jump out of an airplane without my anti-anxiety medication, literally plummet towards the earth from the sky <laughs> with just the parachute. Like it kind of gave me that confidence to be like, if I can do that, I can do, like, there's so many other things I can do as well. Um, nice. I like that. Yeah. That's kind of what gave me that little itch to begin with. I was like, I'm not ready to be like boxed in, I think. Yeah. Not, even at school, I was always that one that was like, but why? Do you know, like I was always questioning things. I never quite fit into that box of sit down, do what you're told, do your work, produce, you know, all of that. I was always like, why are we doing this? Tell me more. Like I always wanted to kind of 
like that inquisitive mind kind of thing and the, yeah then kind of really scratch that itch oh this is great what you're sharing though is how you have taken the the leap of faith obviously jumping out of a plane as well i mean you, you you've got a possibility of dying but that you've gone to the other side of the world you're willing to explore and i guess in a way find your path not feeling that rigidness and that trapped and once you felt that freeness you, you suddenly come conscious with yourself and it's like oh mm. my anti anxiety medicate i yeah I don't need to rely on this anymore mm. or this is not something that is is required uh, which again i think uh, you know a lot of people that i've had conversations with uh, that have been on you know antidepressants is that as soon as they yeah like you say feel free or they're in good environments feel good about stuff looking after themselves it becomes a way of yeah breaking free from that cycle and i think you've just again shared that's it's possible you know and i think as well for people to know it's possible is is really really great so i think just how you transitioned into yoga was was somebody going to a yoga class and you or did you just see it advertised and thought oh you know i'm I'm feeling quite free-spirited at the moment i just want to give it a go like what what kind of brought you to do that literally stumbled across it it was like it just got put in my path and ah. uh, we were with we were like should we go and give this a go and, I, <laughs> and, and just kind of explored it that way and didn't really know what I was getting myself like in my head I was like oh, I've seen yoga you know like a lot of people will come to a yoga class and be like yeah yeah I know what I'm doing like be all right I'll figure it out as I go and you're like when you come out of it you're like whoa that was a lot harder than I thought and yeah. I feel so different now than when I actually walked into that class but yeah, literally stumbled across it. Got the universe blocked it there. <laughs> Bang. No, that's great. Because I think it's sometimes a bit of a like an, an inflection point on like what brought you to to go and try something and then look where you are now. So that's a really good starting point. So when you was out in Australia, how long did you stay there for? And then I guess what happened then once you returned back to the UK? So I we were we obviously we were gonna go for just a couple of months when we first started planning it, but then we decided six months. Um, so my best friend who I went traveling with, he got given six months sabbatical. So we were literally going to go for six months together. We'd got our working holiday visa so that we could like earn money while we were there. Um, I ended up actually working in a call center, which is very different to what I do or did do and do now. Um, but you meet, we met loads of other backpackers and locals and stuff like that working in that role, which was quite nice. Um, so yeah, we were going to go for six months and then it got to Christmas and I was like, I'm not ready. I'm not going home. Like we were supposed to be coming home in like the February, but it just dropped in at Christmas. So I was like, no, I can't go home right now. Um, and I sat with my friend and I was like, you obviously you need to go. I don't need to go. So I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to change my flight. I'm going to stay longer. I might go to Melbourne. I might do a bit more traveling. Like I'm just, I'm not ready to leave. I'm not ready to go home. Um, I actually rang my nan at Christmas and I was like, nan, can you tell mum I'm not coming? And she was like, no, do your own date work. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, no. Um, and I ended up ringing my mum, and my mum was like, I didn't think you'd be coming home. Like, I'm kind of expecting it. I was like, oh, okay. Um, so decided to stay longer, moved to Melbourne for, I can't remember how long I was there. It was, I think it was between a month and two months. Um, went to Thailand. Our, our route home was meant to stop in Thailand. So I did that bit with my friend who I'd gone traveling with and then I flew back to Melbourne from Thailand and he came back to England. Um, so it was like the first time that I was completely on my own. Like obviously I'd got friends that I was that I'd met along the way, but again, that complete discomfort of being that, oh God, if I made the right decision, that like my safety like network, my safety blanket's gone. He's he's gone back home. I've got friends, but I've not known them very long and like going at it on my own again. But again, leaning into that discomfort, just seeing what happened. Because I always had that kind of thought in the back of my mind of if it goes wrong, I just get a flight. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like it is as simple as just, I mean, obviously there's cost involved, but it is as simple as just getting on a plane and coming home if that's what I needed to do at that point. Um, so yeah, I stayed out. So I ended up doing a year. I, I used my whole work and holiday visa. Ah. Uh, did some more time in Melbourne and then back to Sydney. Um, Sydney kind of became my home and it, it, even just like the people that you meet there like I met I ended up living in a um, penthouse apartment with a rooftop overlooking um, 
Darling Harbour could see the Anzac Bridge one way, Sydney Harbour Bridge the other. And I was like, how the hell have I got here? <laughs> wow. Okay. That's nice. That's good. Yeah, and it, that was, I just found that on Gumtree, like just the room on on rent for Gum, on Gumtree. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> These things that you can find when you, you just look out for it or when it's there, it's just felt. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I came home on like end of August. I actually had a Skype interview for a teaching job. Um, which was unheard of back then. This was like 2015, um, especially for teaching role, because they obviously can't see me teach. They can't, you know, obviously over, everything over video call is very different to being, you, you don't pick up each other's energy the same yeah. way. I couldn't see the school. They offered me the job and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll take it. Because I thought I, I need a job when I get home. My visa here is running out. Um, I did get offered sponsorship to stay, but I was working as a PA at the time in a like um, in a phone company, and I was like, I, if I got the sponsor, if I took the sponsorship, that meant I had to stay in that role for a year uh, for four years. Um, ah. And at the time, the UK, the teacher they've changed it now, but the teaching degree at the time, if you didn't go straight into teaching within three years within a full time role, your degree was like done. Like you had to go back to uni and start again. So I was like, well, I'm not going to risk that right now. I've spent however much money on my degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've, I mean, they've changed it now, I think, because they're running mm. out of teachers. <laughs> There's loads of people well, leaving. Um, I so, wonder why. I know, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and people go to me, do you re- regret leaving? I'm like, absolutely not. Um, but yeah, so I, ca- I came home in the August, started my teaching job in the September, and I was like, I need I need the yoga again. I need, to, I need something to keep me like steady in a way and I was like, I'm not going back to medication I got a bit PT at the gym I got back into yoga like got well not back into yoga but got into yoga as more of like a regular you know weekly practice kind of thing and started seeing the mental health benefits and the physical benefits from the you know the PT and the um and the yoga and things like that to kind of all come together um and I honestly don't think I'd still be stood here now if I'd have not used the yoga and the fitness and the you know the well-being side of things to, yeah. to get me through no I, I really like that and I think just how well different directions obviously there's different opportunities on the table everything kind of like came to you and you, you you adapted you dealt with it but I think just in that coming back to the UK so when you when you became what what and how and how long did you stay in teaching for before then you decided because obviously yoga started to grow for you and you started transitioning naturally with it yeah when was kind of that point of I think this could be a business for me day two no, I'm <laughs> imagine that's so good um yeah I literally so I I was in Surrey at the time um I was in my first role for three years as a teacher Within five months, I got offered early years leadership. So I'd kind of skipped into leadership quite quickly. Um, I didn't get the pay benefits, but I got the I got the I got the words on on my um on the paperwork. Um yeah, so I did I did that role for three years and then I moved to another school. Um I, I, I again, similar to me being at school, I think I've I've told a lot of people the story, but I because I question things. Uh, the education system's gonna be like as I say this but I, I question things a lot and if it doesn't sit right with me I want to know like why you want me to do something so if I was being told okay right now we need to change this entire way of working to this yeah. I'd be like why because this is working like I'm getting I'm getting the evidence the kids are happy the kids are making progress why why are we getting rid of that to do this and start completely from scratch and yeah. it was always like like a political thing it was never like based on the children um so I kind of questioned things a lot and again never fit into that box I was always the kind of outsider in a way because I kind of I my core belief is that kids need to be happy and they need to be able to be you know independent with certain things but it was captured like especially in early years you know we've got kids that are like four and five years old if not younger in nursery at, at that age do they really need to be able to read like a book no they need to be able to communicate they need to be able to you know obviously reading obviously helps but those core kind of needs need to be met first before doing anything else and I kind of still do feel like the education system prioritizes the outside rather than the core mm. um 
I can almost like see the head teachers like like give me like dagger eyes across the room as I say this but um yeah it I kind of never fit into that that box of a teacher so I spent three years there and I was like it's the school it's the academy I'll move um so I moved to another school um still in Surrey I was there on a one-year contract and again I was like no we're not that there's so many safeguarding issues like you know with the safety of the children not in school but like you know from the home life and stuff like that why am I then trying to force these four-year-olds to sit down and write me a sentence when they've not eaten breakfast today or they've not had a bath in three days like you know like again the core needs are not being met and we're trying to plaster over it with education right um so again I was like it's the school I'll move school I lasted a year there moved to another school um and I was actually in year one that year but they wanted a early years like specialist experience teacher to bring early years philosophy so like the learning through play into year one so I was like great yeah this is kind of I can put my own stamp on it here I can bring in like my passions into the year group and um ended up COVID hit so I was there for like six months and then COVID hit but me and my partner at the time had decided that we were going to move to Chesterfield instead of Surrey like cheaper to live etc cetera, etc cetera. already resigned we both had already resigned and we're like oh now we're in a global lockdown what are we going to do here we've got no job nowhere to live and um, we'd already given our notice at our flat that we were renting so we're like what the hell are we going to do and I was like I need to get a job in teaching because it's secure Mm. um I can't in my head I was like I can't start a business in a lockdown especially like you know when you're working with people so in my head I was like I can't do that now because I can't see anybody (laughs) I can't even get started um so yeah got a job again um I was hoping it would be via a video call but the school that I applied for like no if you want the job you're coming for the interview it's like three and a half hours away but okay (laughs) so I came up for the interview got off the job was there for a year and again I was like this is not okay I mean I'm still growing my hair back as you can see but like my hair my hair was falling out through stress I know I got diagnosed with like multiple allergies um loads of kind of different gut issues I I ended up on FODMAP diet where all I could eat was meat and potato or rice and I was vegan at the time and I was like how the hell am I going to go from being vegan to eating just meat and potato um, but it was just to try and sort out my gut and my hormone levels and okay. it ended up just being stress, not just stress, but it was, it was stress that was causing all of that. And where, where was that stress primarily coming from? The, I personally now think it's because I was out of alignment. Like I wasn't doing what I was passionate about. I was kind of going against my beliefs all the time. I wasn't in alignment with my own beliefs and my core values within the ah. environment that I was in. Okay. Okay. So, you know, at the time though. If you can remember, what did you feel the stress was coming from at that time? Before, like, looking back now, you know what it is now? Yeah, I think workload. Because ah, okay. I mean, workload in education is, I mean, it's quite a big topic. If you know if you know anyone that works in schools, like, you know, or even knowing within that system, workload is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I do, um, yeah. Yeah, so I thought, at the time, I was like, it's just workload. I just need to manage my time a bit better. I just need to do, and it was always like, I'll just do this, I'll just do this, and the kind of stress levels never went and I was questioning going back on medication to manage my anxiety and yeah I I had no life outside of work because I just couldn't handle it on top of work Uh, I was like 28 years old I should not feel like this yeah yeah sure my hair shouldn't be falling out I shouldn't be this poorly I shouldn't be this miserable (laughs) yeah um I should be able to have a social life I should be able to see my friends you know and yeah, that was kind of, that's what, I mean, I still do think a lot of it was that. Of course. But looking back now as well, that environment never fit, I never fit in that environment. That environment was never meant for me, I don't think. No, I, I think that that what you've just shared there is is great because I think a lot of people are now feeling the depth of your journey as well. Like we're putting the pieces together. So you'd hopped a little bit from a, a teaching job to another teaching job. So it's like, in a way you was kind of, not convincing yourself but you was kind of reassuring yourself that it, it that this job was not for you so you thought well I'm not just gonna go because I don't know what to do if I do cut this off now because obviously yeah. you, you, you feel that sense of I've just studied for like four years I put myself in debt for this kind of thing so I want to give it a real good go mm-hmm. you've gone in it again mm, you feel like you're in this box then you move to the next one 
mm, still in this box. And then it's giving you that. So the warning signs are there, but then yeah. it's giving you that full whack when <laughs> when you've gone like, oh, well, what's happening to my hair? Stress is building up. And then you're thinking, because obviously you knew that when you went out to Australia that your, your anti- anxiety medication was there you started swaying back towards that so that was your trigger so for you then how did your how did your yoga business come about what what started to happen there so I've, like like we've already said I was using yoga to kind of help manage anxiety and well-being and um I was still still going regularly it, through lockdown obviously I couldn't go but I kind of joined an online platform and was doing it through there and then when things started opening up I've said moved from my kind of yoga community back in Surrey up here. So I kind of had to find a studio or somewhere that fit. Um, Because obviously you you resonate with different teachers differently and different studios, different styles of practice. I was trying out a load of places up here. Um, And my partner at the time, I I remember ringing my mum, like just in floods of tears coming home from school, like drive, uh, obviously through the car, but driving home, basically having a panic attack and being like, mum, I need you to calm me down because I'm driving. I need someone to talk to me. Um, And she was just like, what's the weather like? You know, just like distraction techniques. She'd also text my partner at the time and was like, Gemma's on her way home. Like she's not in a good way. Like get ready. Like she's going to need support kind of thing. Um, And as soon as I walked through the door that day, I just broke down. I actually rang the doctors and I was like, I need to get signed off. My stress levels are insane. Um, I will be honest, I was I was bullied by the head teacher that I worked under. Um, ah. And I have, I've mm. followed through with those complaints to higher levels, um, like union and stuff like that. But, you know, when you know you're the target and nothing you can do is right. Yeah. I, I was, I'd gone from golden girl to, like, bottom of the pile. Like, you're going to take all the, like, crap for everything and even if it wasn't me it'd be like well you're you work in that department right okay but I didn't do that though like yes I manage that department but I can't take on like the repercussions from somebody else's behaviors if that makes sense I can help manage it but that's not my fault um and there's a few people that have gone through the same thing within the same school but obviously I won't mention the school on here (laughs) no no that's that's a smart thing yeah but (laughs) but what a what a Oh, like traumatic experience yeah, for you, you know. But in a way, now I'm so grateful that I had that because I don't. If I hadn't have had the big push, I think I'd still be there. Uh, okay. It, I, it was that thing that was like, right, no, I can't take this anymore. So I literally, I rang the um, rang the doctors, got signed off for two weeks to begin with, um, and I spent the first week just that almost like in rehab at home, like just being like, I just need to sleep. Like that's all I need to do is sleep. I need to sleep and just get some fresh air. Um, And then my partner towards the end of that week was like, why don't you look into yoga teacher training? Like you've been talking about it for years. I was like, I can't be like, what am I supposed to do other than teaching? Like I'm a school teacher. I was, I thought I was in that box. So yeah, because I was a primary teaching degree. So I, I can't even go into secondary teaching from there. So it, it's it was very kind of boxed up and labeled as a primary school teacher so in my head I was like well that's what I am like I'd labeled myself as my job like I took on that identity um and then I was also like we're also halfway through a lockdown like we've, we've come out of lockdown but travel's still restricted and you can't go to certain places and I was like, I want to go to Bali to do my teacher training and I can't get there so what's the point of doing it now uh, but then a friend of mine from uni, she'd just done hers through lockdown, through this, through this school that had put their teaching platform online. So I could study to be a yoga teacher through their online platform. Um, and I did that. I got signed off for two months, I think it was, and did my yoga teacher training online during that time. Um, and I didn't know whether I was going to go and go and do it full time. I didn't know if I was going to use it as like a bit of a side business, like get some money through a hobby, you know, take on a few classes, maybe in the weekends or evenings and drop some hours in teaching um, or just use it to learn and to find out more about the philosophy of yoga and like those kind of deeper levels of yoga um, or whether I was going to throw everything up in the air and start a business. Um, and obviously we know which way that's went now. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we do. And I think, um, just how that obviously from COVID, you know, being in a way mentally health, health a dipped, you needed time, space, recovery. And then I guess it came to you that 
again, just a bit of a push from, you know, your partner to say, hey, just give this a go, see what it's like. You know, it's what you've always wanted to do. That's always good as well, having support in your corner to give oh, you an extra okay. nudge, um, which obviously that's what I'm feeling from this. And this is, again, I feel, for, again, the guys listening to this, if they're in a place where they're wanting to lean into something new and scary, it, it is having some support there to kind of give you an extra nudge. But mm. I think for you then, jumping into this business of running, a yoga business because I, I I know and understand, but I honestly would probably say, Gemma, that many people were a yoga business. <laughs> really? What does that look like? What is it? So I think this is where it'd be good for you to kind of share that. Yeah. So I remember ringing my family and being like, "So I think I'm going to resign," and they were like, "And do what?" And I was like, "Start yoga teaching." And they were like, "What?" <laughs> You're leaving. Like, and obviously, I was leaving a very secure pay packet that was coming in on the 25th of every month without fail you know it, it, I obviously got a sick pay with all you know holiday pay sick pay and I was literally going like oh yeah I don't, I don't want that I'm ready to go and give this a go and make it up as I go along um so yeah left left that but it was I got a lot of pushback from other people for not again not fitting into that social norm of you've gone to uni you've got the degree yeah. now you need to do the career I was like, I've given it a go and it doesn't fit me. And um, I won't say who, but someone within my family said to me, going to yoga teaching, you're a school teacher. Why aren't you doing something for smart people? And I was like, Oof. Oh, that's a bit of a deep one. Smart people. I was like, do you understand what goes into yoga teaching? I was like, I need to know about anatomy, like how muscles work together, how different parts of the body that work, how the brain works, how breath works, you know, like so much more to it. But again, I think it's just people go, oh, this is yoga. I'm going to hold this pose and this is yeah. yoga. A few stretches and a bit of omming and breathing and <laughs> you've done a yoga. <laughs> um, so yeah, that pushed back from a few people. And I remember thinking like, why am I so annoyed by their pushback? Is it because they're not agreeing with me or is it because it's it's a trigger of like pushing me further like making me be like no I can do this I'm going to prove myself and mm-hmm. um, so I had to sit with that for a little bit and I also had a lot of fear around um coming out my comfort zone um, and I actually met a lady met a woman called Kathy Bell who have a have a search for her she's amazing she's um, a breathwork facilitator she used to be a school teacher I met her in a women's circle um so I reached out to her a little bit and I was like I want to leave teaching but I'm terrified so we did this breath work session and she said to me you're you're not scared like what's the fear you're, you're not scared of like leaving teaching like that's not a fear there's a root fear underneath that um and through breath work and through like a, a one-to-one session with her I got to the root cause and it was like a feeling of unsafety like I've been put out of my comfort zone before and it's not paid off quite dramatically. Like I've been in therapy for it. Um, but taking myself out of my comfort zone, being unsafe, my subconscious then goes, well, we can't come out of comfort, comfort zone now then because it's always unsafe outside there. Okay. So I had to try and fight against that. So I used breath work to support me with that. Um, and then yeah kind of and she said to me you're not scared like what are you scared of I was like not have enough money to put food on the table she was like how much is a tin of beans how much is a loaf of bread you can put food on the table so yeah. I was like okay and you know when someone says it to you so obviously you're like oh yeah that, yeah true um mm. it's just that like, I said what if I can't pay my rent would you have family yeah have they got a house yeah well can't you stay with them then in, in between things I was like yeah <laughs> And then she was like, you're not scared of those things. You're scared of being unsafe, taking yourself out of your comfort zone and being safe. But you can't um, you can't prove yourself wrong until you do it. Like you can't rewire your brain until you go out of your comfort zone and prove yourself. Mm, so I was I like, like again, leaning into that, just leaning into the discomfort of it might go terribly wrong, but if it does, I'll learn something from it. But it also, what if it works out? That a lot of the time, I think a lot of people will go, if what if I do that and this happens? What if I do that and this happens? What if I do that and it works? Yeah, do you know, other, like, never yeah. You get there. <laughs> no, I think that's brilliant. Again, I really like that. There's a there's a lot that um, you've shared there, and I think just just on the back end of what you've said, yeah. What 
what happens if it was to be successful? We always, I guess, I guess, channeled towards the negativity and the fear. But then again, like what you said about how people had said those thoughts and like what you're doing and oh, that don't sound like a very structured or sustainable business. Whatever they were saying, that they're people that are negative. And again, that's going to make you think of, well, actually, yeah, like you second guess yourself. Like what about mm. if it doesn't work? So with you then having this, I guess, support again, somebody opening you up and saying to you that the depth wise, which I think is really good because obviously a lot of what we are, I guess, exposed to today is quite surface level, surface level, isn't it? We don't go deep, you know, within mm. ourselves. When, when she'd spoken about the unsafe, the unsafe part, or like you are always drawn to that, not now I know, but back then you was drawn to the feeling safe. Um, what, what was that coming from then? Is there anything else that, that was triggered by um i was bullied very badly through school yeah that was yes uh, primary and secondary um i had quite a triggering experience as a 14 year old um which again i was out of my comfort zone and i was unsafe um there was also kind of that like, again being in I then went into education and was bullied again by, you know, members of staff or, you know, head teachers and stuff like that. So it was kind of an ongoing theme of unsafety, rocking the boat, um, that uneven ground, standing on uneven ground and not quite knowing where to grab hold of, If you know, as a, as a visual. That was kind of an ongoing theme from when I was about six years old, which is when I first got bullied. I, I remember being pushed off the top of a slide and my elbow dislocated. I literally went off the top over the edge of the slide and hit the floor. Oh. And it kind of carried on from there through primary and then secondary, like my hair got set alight. I had chewing gum shoved in my hair, got oh. beaten up in the toilets, got beaten up in a PE lesson. Like, And at that point, I think it was because, not an easy target because I don't want to use that phrase, but... I, no one would believe it now, but I was quiet back then. <laughs> I was very withdrawn. I would never wanted to be like, I didn't want to be seen mm. because, again, I think I, I never quite fit in as such. So I, can, I didn't want to be seen. I tried to hide myself for fear of the targeting that I was already getting. I never wanted to make worse. Um, and then when I went to college, I was like, I'm going to a college in a completely different town because I need to get away from this. So, again, it was like, I need to get out this not comfort zone because it wasn't comfortable but I need to get out of the area that I know yeah that safetyness of you know better the devil you know kind of thing was going on in my head and I was like I need to get out of here and put myself in a completely different environment to see how I fare with a fresh completely fresh start of knowing that I know and that was really beneficial I got really I still speak to the girls I went to college with now and we're what like 10-15 years on um and it but again, it was that kind of, we were all kind of coming, I went to uh, Kingston College back in Surrey, but we all kind of came from different areas to that space and we did childcare education. And then from there, we've all gone on to different journeys from there. So some people work in school, some people work as like midwives, some people are nannies. There's two of us that have started our own business, completely nothing to do with children <laughs> from mm. there. But um, That's cool. Yeah, taking myself away from those, situations and university I was I, I you know I had no kind of unsafetyness other than like the stress of studying really but yeah those kind of massive triggers through childhood of the feeling of unsafetyness was that what kind of rippled into everything else yeah yeah so I mean I'm just putting this out there that I didn't know that I do know of one of obviously your um, instances where you you had therapy for that but just that what you shared there about the bullying and stuff. I mean, talk about having that at such a young age and how it's carried through. And, and this is a common trait that I've, as listening to people on this podcast, it does affect, you, you know, it affects you later on in life, even at the time, mm -hmm. if you didn't have that emotional or ha knowing, I guess, uh, where your body's at, where your mind's at, but it still is there. So for you having that accountability and support from that breathwork facilitator, I guess what I'd love to know, and I know the guys would, is, what made you think, not like enough is enough, but this is my time. I'm ready to step up. Yeah. Um, I, I, I started going a little bit more deeper into the kind of spiritual practices. So I was still doing yoga. I found this 
um, she, she lives in Ibiza now, but I found this lady through somebody else um, who does Kundalini yoga, which is a very different side of practice. It's more um, like energy based work. You kind of use some yoga postures, but you use the breath a lot more. Um, and it's very different. You know, it's, it's like a breath work practice with movement. Um, and it's meant to move the energy body around. Like any stagnant energy gets released. Um, I went to Reiki with her as well. And she was like, the things that were coming through, I was, there's no way she could have known any of that from anywhere. Like she was bringing stuff up about my childhood, like the trauma that I'd experienced. I was like, how do you know all this? And she said, your body's telling me. I was like, well, it must be because there's no other way you'd know. So again, I started, I was like, well, this, this makes sense now. So I'm going to lean in here. Um, and I started joining women's circles and I got to a point where I was sit, sitting and hearing people's stories and journeys and doing the breath work, doing the movement, doing the um, journaling and stuff like that. It was more for me finding my worth that pushed me to be like, I deserve more than this. And now is my time. Um, and in the, I had Reiki in the March, I think it was March 20. 20, no March 2021 so the year, year after lockdown I had Reiki in the March and then in the September I joined a seven week journey through the chakras so the energy centers in the body and it was through yoga breath dance meditation journaling cacao you know plant medicine things like that all in all in black women's circle so root chakra was to do with safety and I was like I don't feel safe where I am that's what that's what's causing a lot of these issues and then um a sacral chakra was like your creative energy and I was like I need to create more like you know and each week I was coming away being like right the un- I, I'm, I don't feel safe so I need to do this this and this to make myself feel safe I don't feel creative so I need to do this um your inner um your solar plexus which is like your inner kind of fire your inner power kind of energies I was like, I need to fit to sort these other two things out. I need to step up from for myself, not for anybody else. And I don't need anyone else to do it for me. I need to do it from me. And I need to fix, I need to not fix myself, but I need to fix my environment around me to support me, not to hinder me. Yeah. And this is I, this is when I was signed off sick as well, by the way. So I was doing my teach training, doing this, doing this work with and um, whilst being signed off with stress. And Yes, yeah, so we we did that that week about you're in a you're in a fire. I'd gone home to my mum and dad, and I was like, "Mum, I think I'm going to resign." And she was like, "Okay." And I freaked out, rang my partner, and I was like, "I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can resign." He went, "Don't then go back to work on Monday." I was like, "Wait, what? No, I don't want to do that." And he was like, "So resign then." <laughs> Why are we having this conversation? I was like, "Yeah, fair enough." <laughs> so I ended the call and pressed send on the email. Come back to heart chakra weeks. So it's about like you know self compassion, gratitude love for yourself and others and there was like 20 of us sat in the sat in this one room and we kind of as you when you have a women's circle you say you know you say your name to welcome yourself into the space you might share a word or a sentence of how you how you you're feeling and with that journey it was like in the last week this is what I've done so I was like in the last week I've resigned from my career and everyone was like yeah you have done and then it went on to a few other people and they're like and I've quit my job and I've quit my job and I've quit my job and I've quit my job. And the woman holding the space was just like, oh, welcome. <laughs> wow. No, that is so good. Yeah. And I was always a bit, I was I was so skeptical of the spiritual work. I was like, that's a load of crap. Like, what what, what do you mean? Like, how can, how can my body tell you that? But then what I, for me, it was, if I experience things myself and they make sense, then I'll take it. But obviously that inquisitive mind in the education system, where I was like, but why? But why? But why? Mm. I kind of didn't need that why because I've had that first hand experience of it working. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um and so yeah, it got it got to that kind of stage and I was like, I need to I need to prove myself for myself. Like I need to step up for myself. I can't take on everybody else's, you know, judgments, thoughts, opinions. Like I've got to do this for me. Um and yeah, press press send on the on the email and resigned like with with teaching you don't get a very quick turnaround it's like a three months turnaround from resigning and um, so I resigned in the October and had to work through until the until Christmas but I was still on sick leave so I used I used up all of my sick leave that I could and then I was like right if I don't go back to work for I think it was 10 school days if I don't go back to work for 10 school days I 
don't, I'm dying when the next pay pack's going to come in. So I'm going to have to go back for a few days and just, you know, protect myself, but go back in and do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, kind of, that's kind of where it went. And then I started in the January. So two and a, two and a, almost half years ago now. Oh, that's so good. And I think um, just how you've been able to share that with other women as well, just again, like-minded people, you've, that I guess brought that barrier down of you're not feeling safe but then you felt safe because obviously you was like I'm quitting my job and then they always quitting the job I think that (laughs) I think that's but but the thing is as well though is you all celebrated it like it's like woohoo well done because you know you you go to somebody around your local area or something you say yeah I've quit my job why yeah you you know what are you doing that for yeah but you what what, how are you gonna put food on the table like you know what what you can do with the money how are you gonna replace it yeah but all these negative responses so you took the plunge in January 2022 yeah so if we was to kind of like I don't want to say a highlight as such because obviously we haven't got an abundance of time on on sharing this but what's changed for you in your personal and professional life by running your own business yeah like yeah let's share that what like even the highs and the lows um Obviously, it's terrifying when you first start. I'm sure you've probably experienced this as well. Like going into the first session of teaching. So I, I tried, I was advertising classes to get started in the January. I took on Hot Pod was my first ever class I'd ever taught. Um, so obviously, you've got the dark, you've got the heat, you've yeah, got the, you know, everything else going on. I was like, if I can do, you know, again, completely out of my comfort, almost like jumping out of the plane. Like if I can do it there, I can do it everywhere else. <laughs> um, and yeah that kind of being able to work like is it I don't know if autonomy is the right word I want to use because I'm working that with within other studios and stuff like that but being my own boss as such I choose when I work I choose where I work and if something doesn't feel right I don't do it whereas Mm. within some when you're working in a system like an education system you haven't got that luxury of going no this doesn't feel right I'm not going to do it um so that, that's one big high. Um, the cheapest, cheaper holidays so don't have to go in term time is also great. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Um, the, yeah, the, I think the, I had moments where, obviously the, the hard side of it is, I don't know how much money is going to come in next month. I don't know how much money is going to come in the month after. Like you kind of, it's not a set pay, is it? No. You know, obviously the studios, I have a certain amount of classes that I regularly, regularly teach and usually it's a kind of average averages out the same every month but then obviously my own classes that I do my events my retreats and stuff like that that's that can change from month to month so that that thing is budgeting learning how to budget was the big thing that I needed to work out um and trusting myself like trusting that I might not have earned anything this month but next month I'm you know I, I can yeah. that like, self-belief um my self-worth has gone from like here to here because I've I've proved myself to myself not for anyone else's benefit or you know I don't it, it's amazing when people come out and go that was like the I love that class thank you and that really builds you up so that kind of interaction and community I love community that like, we've had this conversation before haven't we like yeah it's the people that you are around a lot that help create who you are so when you've got that those like-minded people those people that are there for the wellness like you know for all the benefits that come with yoga and that really builds me up um but my I remember the so the first retreat that me and Mickey did last May um I remember sitting in in circle and we both just looked at each other and just burst into tears and we were like we've just done this like what Uh (laughs) And like my my best friend was there, Rachel. She was like, I was like, why are you crying? And she's like, I'm just so proud of you. It's like, you know, just things like that. And realizing how I think we do this. And I actually sat and journaled a couple of weeks ago. I was in a really like not a great headspace. I was just really tired. I've come back from Bali and been like, oh, I don't think I fit in the UK anymore. And right. trying to figure out what to do with that. But I was like, I need to just sit with this. So I sat and journaled and I was like, where have I come in the last 12 months? Which I don't think most of us do very often. No we kind of we're like oh it's working now and it's great but then okay now it's not working now and this doesn't feel nice but giving myself that specific time to sit and reflect 
I mean, I missed stuff out. Like I've gone back and added to it and been like, oh yeah, I did that as well. So I added that to that kind of journaling. But what have I done in the last 12 months that I'm proud of? What and what what have I done that I've achieved? Like what's, you know, and even then seeing the like negatives of things, flipping them and going, but I learned that from that. So actually that became a positive because I got this out of it. Yeah, um, you flipped it. Yeah, and yeah, so there, there, there are some of the big positives and obviously being able to teach like amazing people, being able to interact with amazing, amazing people and just watching the business grow from strength to strength is amazing. I'm so grateful for the people that trust me as well. Um, obviously, I've got my treatment room where I do Reiki now as well. So I do the yoga and the Reiki, the retreats. Um, and obviously going to Bali with my friend and just kind of getting getting back to what lights me up again. And I didn't, I don't think being in the education system for me, you know, it might work for some people, but for, for me, it was not an environment where I could let my soul shine. If that, you know, if, not wanting to sound too much like a yoga teacher, <laughs> but I, I wasn't me in that role. Like, whereas within this role, I'm so much more confident within myself. I know my self-worth, like all of that has just grown strength to strength. And that's probably the biggest highlight you know kind of from the business and from putting myself within what I do now really yeah I think um just just hearing you out on that is I'm I'm inspired by what you've done Gemma to be honest because I think you. you know having that creativity flow again with yourself of being able to have the luxury of running your own diary again working with some great people the community that you've built and created with the the yoga then obviously you, you know you've met mickey and then you've done the retreat and just yeah those pinch pinch me kind of moments have come yeah. from it and and i think just what you've said there slowing down and reflecting yeah 100 percent. because when you're a business owner and I, I don't know what your thoughts on this but i i still find myself heading towards this in some stages is we're always chasing the next thing you know it's mm -hmm. like it, there's got to be more i need more you know, I want to build up more and do this and do that. But then where is that time? What you just said, where you can just sit with a pen and piece of paper and go, well, what have I actually achieved here? You know, let, let, let this be a space for me to give myself some credit because we, we don't do it enough. We don't. And as a society, I think we're very much trained from very early on to reflect on the things that haven't worked. Yes. Oh, that didn't work. Why? What can I learn from that? Why do we, I don't think we're taught. Oh, I know we're not taught in schools, but we, I don't think as a, as a society we're taught to go, that worked really well because I did this. So if I do that again, that, will, that might work again, or that worked well because that happened. But, but like I said just now as well, that didn't work. But what came from it? You know, looking at it from a different angle. Mm. You know, like when you're at school and it's like when you do those DT lessons, like what didn't work? <laughs> Yeah. Why did why did my model not work? Oh, because this, this, and this. You don't ever go. What? But I learned how to fix that, though. You know, you you kind of don't look at it from that other lens. I don't think. No, you you definitely don't. And I think just for you to actually be aware of that, though, is really good. I mean, obviously, yoga is awareness and checking in with yourself and your body and your mind. So I guess for you, it it comes with the business that you're running. But mm. just for people to have, I guess, more context on. No, I don't want to say the negative side of running your own business, but the things that come with it that maybe are challenging and, and can be mundane, you know, not not the things that you would say are glamorous. Because uh, obviously we've talked about the stuff that's really good, but what would you be sharing as like, look, you know, if you are stepping into a business, I'm not saying be prepared for this, but this is this is part of it. Invoices. <laughs> hate writing invoices. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like what comes from them, but... Um, the the admin like I was I don't think we're not taught how to run a business unless you do a business qualification so learning what I needed to do to be able to run the business to make it a success that was I needed to figure I needed to find my feet with that um and the obviously I'm not paid unless I'm teaching so when I'm sat at the laptop doing all the admin doing the advertising the I don't know, the accountants, the, the accounts, the social media, the emails, the, you know, all the other, because you are everything when you run your own business. Um, 
it, it can be exhausting, but finding that time management of this is my cut off. Otherwise you will work every single hour of every single day if you if you let yourself. Um so that's one big thing. Um and learning that there is there is it can be isolating because in an office you're surrounded by people all the time. Um so for me, a lot of the time, obviously I've got Mickey, who's also in the same industry. I've got Katie, who's in very similar industry. And it's it's c- connecting with them when we can. You know, like we'll go for like a business lunch instead of sitting like over the phone or voice noting or whatever, just so we can literally sit down and pick up on each other's energy, be around people again. And so finding those pockets where you can to connect actually with somebody um and not saying yes to everything like like you said earlier we're constantly chasing that next thing because yeah. we don't there's no guarantee that there's going to be another one after it so not say, saying yes when it feels right but saying no when it doesn't is something that I've had to kind of learn and not just get to burn out from doing too many things and making sure that I do actually have a day off. That's where I'm at at the minute. I'm do like, I don't, I don't teach on a Saturday, but I'm also responding to emails and I'm also doing this. So actually giving myself a day, like trying to find a full day where I'm not being pulled to do what, you know, it doesn't always work every week because something might crop up that I have to get done. Yep. Um, but trying to be more conscious of my time so that I'm not, you know, running on empty, basically. No, I... I um. I've been in a similar position before COVID. Uh, I think I would still be doing what I was doing before, but COVID stopped me in my tracks because it closed the business Mm. down overnight. But just what you've shared there, I think on the flip side of stuff, it's important for people to know because, you know, it's, yeah, you are probably all wearing a few hats initially at the beginning. Obviously, as your business scales and grows, the the biggest thing that you would want to be looking at is the things like what you say, maybe a a personal assistant or an administrative to to take care of that once it starts growing and you're moving down the line. I mean, it's important though to, I guess, do the groundwork, but then as you're doing it, it's it's about not always, like you say, chasing. It's about, right, where's my recovery? You know, where am I, where am I in all of this? Because as you know, in business and running your own thing, we can say yes to a lot of things. We do like pleasing people. It's always nice to receive fantastic feedback, but then it can leave us, yeah, in a place of fatigue, um, yeah. and and then you know you, you kind of you love the the yoga stuff and it's like yeah but I'm I'm always high energy and vibing off people but then it's like as soon as I like get home I'm like oh I've got to do all these invoices I've got to do all these emails and I'm like thinking I'm I'm so exhausted yeah and I have got to points so where I'm like I have not got anything else to give right now like I'm done like completely done and I'm trying to get to the point now where I'm not getting to that burnout like I'm going okay, I need to, I'm not working today. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to a class or I'm going to go and be out in nature, you know, and even in the, in the slots in the day where I'm not, because obviously I don't teach every minute of every day. Of course I don't. And I'm not sat at the laptop every other minute of the day. So trying to find those, like, oh, it's nice now. I'm going to go for a walk or I need to go into nature today, or I'm going to go and have a nap because that's, (laughs) that's what I need to do right now. But like being more aware, like you said, with the yoga, like you've got more of a, sort of learn to have more of an awareness of my body and my mind but actually listening to it and giving it what it's telling me it needs rather than just going yeah but shush because I need to do this like no I need to stop otherwise my body will make me stop do you know what I mean yeah no 100% I, look I've I've been there you know um because you know when you love what you do and you're passionate it's it's very easy like you say to just keep leaning into that discomfort it becomes a bit addictive it's like an obsession but then Mm -hmm. at some point there is a breaking point you know there's there's a time where you're like "Ah, I need to recharge obviously you had been out to Bali and that was a a great place for you just to kind of (laughs) well I feel like I've been to rehab (laughs) yeah like a really high uh vibe and and stuff I mean it I mean I think everyone's spoken about that that it in the local area like, oh my god Bali looks so great I mean even yeah. I did um so obviously Gemma we are coming towards the um end of this episode and honestly there's been so many good points that you shared here and, and this will be something I know a lot of people will take value from but it, there is a question that I love to ask every single guest on this episode being a drum roll <laughs> yeah so um 
Here we go. So what, what does master in your life mean to you? Oh, being in alignment, like with your, with your core values and your core belief, because if you're not in alignment, what are you doing and who are you doing it for? I think that most of my journey has been about finding that alignment, like where do I feel I fit in what, you know, in all kinds of aspects, personal life, business, work, whatever it is, geographically, <laughs> where do I fit in the world and how do I know I fit there? Because I feel good there. I can, I can be myself there. And I'm, you know, it's never, I also don't think it's a, it's never one size fits all. And I don't think it's always a um, linear process. Like I might fit right now, but that might change again in six months time, might change again in a year and just being able to keep checking back in. How do I feel right now? And what do I need? Because if I'm not nurturing myself first, I don't have anything to give anybody. Um, So yeah, being in alignment, I think would be my answer to that one. That's a great answer. And I also like the bit that you actually shared off the back of that because, yeah, we go back to the beginning of this episode. It was heavily about you being in this box. You wanted to escape from it and be your authentic self. You've done that, being in alignment. And, yeah, you know, you can't give what you don't have. So I think that is so, so good. So, Gemma, before we close up this episode, where can people find you? Instagram and Facebook under Gemma Lou Yoga. Um, I've got a website as well, gemlyyoga.com. Um, obviously, I teach in local um, local studios in Chesterfield and Mansfield. Um, and I also do retreats in the UK. So you can join me for a weekend retreat. Um, or I am doing a retreat in Bali next year. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if, if find me on social media or, um, or my website. Oh, no, that's brilliant. Well, I will make sure that all of the handles websites is in the show notes anyway but i guess it's pretty straightforward to people to find you so even if you are listening to this and you're abroad you can 100 percent fly over uh to, to the uk or you can meet obviously Gemma in bali but i just want to say finally before we close this off Gemma, you're doing amazing work obviously i come to your yoga classes and it's so great that you have leaned into your discomfort and you're building a business you love thank you thanks for coming to yoga too <laughs> <laughs> we love it um but no thanks again <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode. If you found this useful and it's provided value to you, if you don't mind, go onto my channel, tap follow and keep in the loop for more podcast episodes like this. And if you want to go one step further, please leave us a positive review. It would mean the world to us and it would help spread the message to many more people. And also, if you want to go that one step further again, tag us on socials, drop us a message. I will always respond. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.